In this video, I'm going to share with you the top six wheelchair friendly things to do in Lewis and Harris, including beaches, otter spotting, and one thing I didn't even think was possible. Hi, welcome back or welcome to my channel Wheelie Bra. I'm Helen and I share my wheelchair adventures from all around Scotland. So if you think you'd like to see more of that, make sure you like and subscribe. Let's get straight into it. I've got six top things to do in Lewis and Harris as a wheelchair user. All of the locations I'll mention down in the description box. So don't worry, you can sit back, relax and enjoy the video and check that out later. Right, here we go. In at number six is the Golden Road in Harris. So when people think of Harris, they think of the beaches, the white sand, the turquoise water, and uh, what's not often mentioned is this incredible road. It's called the Golden Road because it took so much money to make that the residents of Harris joked that it must be made of gold. And I really love that Scottish sarcasm has actually made itself into a permanent place name. Love that. The Golden Road is a fantastic drive you can do. Honestly, it's like being on another planet at times. Uh, we didn't actually take much footage. We just drove along with the windows down, taking our time, so I'd highly recommend that you do that. Just make sure that you're making use of the passing places to let any locals pass who want to be going at an actual decent speed. <laughs> at number five, we have Hushinish Beach in Harris. So this beach is absolutely stunning. You can't get down to it in your wheelchair like many of the beaches in the Outer Hebrides, which is a shame, but you have an absolutely fantastic view from the road up at the top and you can wheel right along. Can get a little bit sandy, but it's not too bad. There are excellent facilities there. So there are accessible toilets, um, which have rails, they're a little bit bigger than usual, and there are also accessible showers. These showers are wheel in and they have little flip down um, shower seats, which of course won't suit everybody, but if you're out and about on the road, if you're doing a lot of traveling and you wanna freshen up, that's the place to do it. There's only one accessible parking place, but it is paved, so that makes things a lot easier. You know that I hate gravel. <laughs> And uh, a really cool thing about Hushnish Beach is that they have an indoor picnic area, which sounds bizarre, but if you think about the Scottish weather that we get, it makes perfect sense. So there's picnic tables inside, but the area has floor to ceiling windows, so you can just look out over that incredible view and um, watch the storms roll in. Why not? <laughs> is Boster Beach on Great Bernera. When we arrived, we were met by two lovely cows who I hung around with for a little bit in the car park while Kirsty did a recce to check out if I could actually get down to the beach. So she, what she noticed is there's actually another parking space a little bit further down by the cemetery. So don't park in the main car park, get yourself down to the cemetery. And from there, there's a little track that goes along and takes you out over a grassy mound to just this stunning view. There's a really cool sculpture there called the Time and Tide Bell that rings at high tide. It was designed as a statement about rising sea levels in the UK and it's part of a much wider project. So I'll put details about that in the description box below. I'd highly recommend checking it out. It's an important project. Great Bernera as a whole is a really cool island to drive around. So take some time to do that as well while you're around Boster Beach. There are still three more wheelchair friendly things to do in Lewis and Harris coming up. But if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to like and subscribe and press that little bell button to make sure you get notified of my newest videos. Right, on to the next three, including one that I didn't think would be possible. Keep watching for that. Number three is 
a little bit of a hidden gem. It's a riverside walk in Carloway. Now it's completely paved the whole way and apparently it goes as far as Stornoway. We didn't check that out, we just wheeled along slowly with the dogs and it was so chilled out and we even saw an otter. Plus you now get to see my really terrible David Attenborough impression. So we're here down by the river. I should do my David Attenborough voice here. Here we are, down the river. No, I sound more like Gillian Anderson in that Margaret Thatcher thing. The Iron Lady. Anyway, we've seen an otter in the water. Cassie, you chuffed? Yes, really <laughs> nice. It's a really lovely, quiet walk and it was one of the most chilled out things that we did the entire time we were there. Number two is the Gyaranan Black House Village. Gyaranan Black House Village is a historical village that really does just transport you back in time. It's bizarre to believe that people were living in these houses until the early 1970s. In 1989, the local community trust managed to start renovating these properties using traditional methods. So what you see today is very close to how it would have looked way back when. Sadly, I couldn't get into any of the properties using my wheelchair. There are two accessible toilets, though accessibility varies. So the first one has a small step to get into it and the other one is down quite a steep slope, but they are there. The slope going down into the village starts gradually, but does steepen after a while. So I didn't go too far. All that aside, I still think it's a really fantastic place to go and just chill out and spend some time and imagine what it would have been like to live in those houses way back when or even in 1970. And now for number one, the one thing I didn't think would be possible, so I'm really, really pleased that we managed to get there. Callanish Standing Stones. It's what a lot of people come to Lewis for. It's a fantastic historical site managed by Historical Scotland and they have a fully wheelchair accessible visitor centre with cafe and a toilet as well. However, to get to the stones from the visitor centre, you have to go up a path and then there's a kissing gate so you can't get through in a wheelchair. If you have a mobility impairment, you might manage it. So, my tip is, as you're driving down towards the Callanish Stones Visitor Centre. Keep your eye out for a steep road on the right. It actually has a big caution sign warning um, vehicles because of how steep it is, but it's fine getting up there in a car. If you're in a motorhome or a caravan, obviously use your own judgment. You can get right up to the top of the slope. There's a little car park there where you can park up right next to a gate, and that gate takes you right into the area where the standing stones are. So it is a little bit difficult. I needed Kirsty to push me a little bit because it's a bit bumpy getting through there. Not sure how a power wheelchair would handle it, but I managed it in my manual. Once I was up there, there was quite a flat area where I could wheel myself around. And honestly, it was just amazing. So we went up twice and the first night we went, there was a sunset um, and the sun was just set in between the stones. There was maybe about eight or ten people there including us but everyone was so hushed and so quiet and so respectful and it felt amazing just to be in the presence of these stones that have been there since before Stonehenge even existed. Going up on the second night when it was cloudier was still really special because it was just the two of us there and we could spend a little bit more time and chat a bit more without worrying about interrupting anybody else's experience. So if you think that's something you can manage, I would highly recommend getting up there. I'm going to shoot a few emails to Historic Scotland and Historic Environment Scotland um, about accessibility because I think it would be fairly simple to improve without affecting the site too much. So yeah, that was incredible. <laughs>
brings this video to an end. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my six top wheelchair friendly things to do in Lewis and Harris and I hope when you visit you'll try some of them out too. Have I missed anything? If so, please put a comment below and let me know because I am going to go back and I do want to try out more stuff. So if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at Wheelie Brawl for more updates. And please check out my other videos in my Outer Hebrides series. Bye for now.